Hi everybody, Dr. Emily here from the Evidence-Based Fitness Academy. Want to take a few minutes to talk about the concept of plantar fasciitis versus plantar fasciosis. Now this is a topic that's highly misunderstood, it's spoken about, and you probably encounter clients, athletes, and patients who frequently experience plantar fascial pain. To understand the difference between itis and osis, we must first understand how our body uses our plantar fascia with every step that we take. All of the fascia in your body, but specifically the Achilles tendon and the plantar fascia is very important for the transfer of impact forces with every step we take. As we walk, we strike the ground, we get one to 1.5 times our body weight in impact forces or vibrations that are coming in. These vibrations are stored in your connective tissue, specifically Achilles tendon and plantar fascia, as potential energy, which is eventually released as elastic energy. Now to use your fascia or your connective tissue for this elastic transfer of impact forces, you must have the perfect balance between stiffness and elasticity. What happens is in different foot types or different movement patterns or a lack of recovery, we start to break down our connective tissue. What happens if you don't have that elasticity is you start to micro tear the connective tissue. When you create a micro tear and you create in an inflammatory process, that inflammatory process in an acute setting would be considered plantar fasciitis. Now what happens is if this happens repeatedly over and over, you get into this chronic state where that inflammatory process is no longer inflamed and it becomes tissue degeneration. Now when our body micro tears the connective tissue, it replaces the collagen with a different type of collagen. So typically your plantar fascia is made up of collagen type one. When you micro tear it, your body repairs it with collagen type Three. Collagen type 3 is less elastic and has less elastic recoil properties when compared to collagen type 1. So now you get into a vicious cycle of micro tearing this less elastic collagen type 3, which again feeds into that degenerative plantar fasciosis state. Another characteristic of degenerative changes or plantar fasciosis is that your blood vessels, the tiny blood vessels that go into the tissue and try to repair it, lay in a very haphazard way. So the neo vessels, they're called, are in again in a haphazard way. This further causes degeneration of the connective tissue. Now we hear a lot of people talking about plantar fasciosis as tissue necrosis. Necrosis means dead tissue. Degeneration and necrosis are not the same thing. Plantar fasciosis is not dead tissue in the bottom of the foot. It is degeneration. It is a change in the composition of the connective tissue. It is not dead. And I encourage you not to use the word necrosis because that is a negative word that is very confusing to the patient. So plantar fasciosis, tissue degeneration. What can we do to get these chronic plantar fasciosis patients back into a recovered state? This is where understanding connective tissue is very important. You cannot just correct the muscle imbalances that are causing that plantar fasciitis. You cannot just do soft tissue release work and stretch and massage. You must do something a little bit more invasive to get that degenerated tissue back to healthy tissue. This is where we start looking at different procedures and injections. There's topaz, which is a procedure where you do radiofrequency ablation. There is PRP, there is bone marrow aspirin injections, there are what's called amniotic membrane injections. And what you're trying to do is aggravate the tissue or provide growth factors so that the body can change that degenerated tissue back into the healthy tissue. Once you provide that injection or that procedure to get the connective tissue back to that healthy state, now that patient is going to respond to the corrective exercise, the orthotics, the stretching, and the uh, correction of the muscle imbalances. So again, understanding what tissue degeneration is, how plantar fasciitis really differs from plantar fasciosis, and how sometimes we have to look at something that's a little bit more invasive, such as these injections. I hope that this helps you better understand plantar fasciitis versus plantar fasciosis. And remember, as always, stay barefoot strong.